Gamers, what's good? We haven't done a Staples tier list in months, and honestly, that last Staples tier list is insanely outdated. And we're going to be in this format for at least another three weeks. Until we get Unchained, I don't really see the Staples changing. And honestly, even after Unchained comes out next month, I still think it's not going to be changing the Staples that much. So I do think we're due for an update on the Staples tier list. We're going to get into all of that. But first, I have one announcement. This is not a sponsor. And actually, hold on. Let me just... The very first Master Duel Central Subathon is going to be happening in like two days starting on Tuesday, March 26th at 5 p.m. EST. I've been wanting to do a subathon to celebrate 20,000 subscribers. Now, we're not quite there yet. We're about 250 away, a bit less than that. But I didn't want to wait until next month because with the release of Unchained and all that stuff, there's going to be a lot of new decks to talk about that are going to be a lot more impactful to the meta than the decks we got this month in March. So I was like, you know what? It probably would be best to just take this last week of March to do our first ever subathon. The time is going to start off at four hours so you know i'm giving people four hours to come in and start supporting every twitch sub is going to add five minutes and every youtube membership is going to add three minutes so technically you can get more bang for your buck if you're supporting on the youtube side as for the goals i really don't know what to expect but i would love to be able to reinvest that money into the channel so basically if we make it through day two and by making it through i just mean like getting to the evening so like 6 p.m est on day two if we get there, I'm going to be able to upgrade my current webcam, which might not look terrible, but whenever I zoom in, you'll see this weird graininess. It doesn't look very good. I'd like to upgrade to something more professional. I really want to reinvest the money into the content. So I'd like to upgrade to just the absolute top shelf webcam if we can make it late into day two. And if by some miracle, we can make it to like 6 p.m. EST on day three, instead of upgrading to a better webcam, I'm just going to go straight up buy like a real mirrorless camera it's going to look a lot more professional that's what all the biggest youtubers are using pretty much you know the farfas the mbts and also if we do make it late to day three i'll shave my head on stream or something uh, one of the cool things that i'm going to be doing probably on day two is uh, me and cali effect are going to be spinning a wheel and having some structure deck duels the wheel of structure decks that should be pretty fun we're also going to be doing some elden ring gameplay if we have the time i'd love to do some retro gaming now i'm sure a lot of you guys just want to get to the tier list or you might even be clicking this video after the subathon has happened but to those who are watching before i can't wait to see you guys now let's get into it all right so my logic for this tier list is basically we have the tier zero, which are cards you're always going to be playing. Tier one, which are like basically must plays, but not absolutely everyone is going to be playing these. Tier two are cards that come up really often. Tier three are cards that are still super good. It's just that they're more deck specific. So they're like staples, but that serve one deck better than another, etc., etc. Uh, and then we have It's All Right, which I mean, is pretty self-explanatory. Just cards that I think are not bad per se, but you know, are not the best staples in the game right now. And we're going to be starting off with just putting a card in the tier zero, a card you always play. And that would be Ash Blossom. I think it goes without saying, really, Ash Blossom, you kind of have to play it. But why do you have to play Ash Blossom? Why is it tier zero? Because Max C exists and it's also tier zero. There is what you call the Max C tax in Master Duel. And it's very, very real. And since we've already got this package up here in tier zero, let's just close it out. This, in my opinion, is the Maxi tax package. This is the must play in every single deck package. Three Max C, three Ash, two called by absolute must play cards in every single deck the only exception i can see and actually i might even put ash under called by just for this is that if you don't care about max c very much you might not play ash you know you might be like well you know i can probably use that space for something else because max c doesn't affect me that much anyway for example if you're playing a trap deck or something like that you might be inclined to not play the ash blossom i feel like you still would but you could justify not playing it. I mean, Maxi into combo decks is ridiculous. Called by negating Maxi is extremely important. And the same goes for Ash. These two cards, just because they can negate Maxi, are must plays that you'll see in every single deck. Now that we've established a tier zero, I'll allow myself to kind of move throughout the tier list without always sticking to the same spot. So we're going to start off with a card that I think is uh, pretty insane and would be up here and that's d shifter so obviously if everyone could play d shifter i'd put it in tier zero because if you can play d shifter you always play it right this might be the best hand trap in the game right next to max c the thing is obviously you can't play d shifter in every deck because some decks just die to their own shifter so you wouldn't want to run it 
because of that, I'm going to put it at the very top of deck specific staples. It's a card that if you can run it, if you can afford to run D Shifter, you absolutely run it. It is a game winning card, especially into the current format. I mean, Snake Eyes absolutely hates Shifter. So does Tier Limit, which is extremely popular right now. Branded can kind of play into Shifter, but they play an extremely gimped board into Shifter. Uh, Math Mech hates Shifter. It's not unplayable, but it does not like Shifter. So Shifter is just an insane card. Wins against so many popular decks. Obviously, Obviously, Cash Tira can run this card, and Cash Tira is a very popular option right now. So this is pretty much deck specific to Cash Tira, as well as many other decks that can afford to run Shifter, such as Vanquish Soul and Exo Sisters, and many other decks. Next up, let's do Triple Tactics Thrust, and I think Thrust is absolutely insane. Just the fact that Thrust can not only get you into your engine cards but can also help you get the exact card you need to out certain scenarios is really, really crazy. Um, this card, I'd say, is kind of interchangeable in terms of tier with like Triple Tactics Talent. It can search talent, but talent on its own is probably better if you're going first. But if you want a card that's better into going second, I would say this card is better because yes, going second, if you can search talent with this, it's great and all. But there's other cards you can search also with Thrust going second that can save you the game. Not to mention sometimes going second, just searching an engine spell. Like if you're playing Snake Eyes, for example, if you searched Where Arf Thou, that could totally change your game plan and, you know, save your combo when you're going second. So I would say Triple Tactics Thrust and T Triple Tactics Talent are kind of in the same tier for me. So we'll just leave it at that. One staple actually that you can search with Thrust that I would put in its own category right now. Well, not really in its own category, but that I just want to put on its own here would be evenly matched. Uh, I just want to put evenly matched in tier two at the top of tier two, honestly, because I think this card is a little bit slept on right now. I think evenly matched is an incredibly good option into this current format. Um, tier limit is really popular and really hates evenly matched. Branded, depending on the scenario, hates it. Snake Eyes absolutely hates evenly matched unless they can set up Baron and that you can't bait it out. But like if they set up Baron de Fleur, usually you have ways to bait out Baron. And then like worst case, you can go to battle phase and crash your own monster if you have to, just so you can activate evenly. And activating evenly into a Snake Eyes board can be so detrimental because oftentimes Snake Eyes will literally fill up their board. They will have like eight to nine to sometimes even 10 cards on the field. So like evenly can really explode on a Snake Eyes board. So I definitely think this card is kind of slept on right now. Highly recommend trying it out. Pretty much every time I've drawn it going second with dinos recently i've been feeling really really good about it next up let's do one of the pseudo must plays because i guess i might as well mention this right now uh i'd say cross out you know is like the top of a pseudo must play it feels like it used to be up here but right now i would say not as much really cross out is an absolute must play if you're playing a combo deck that really hard loses to maxi and you just absolutely need that sixth out to maxi right now there's such a huge variety of hand traps being played in the game that you can't cover everything with cross out so oftentimes in a scenario where a called by would have been good cross out is just not good because you you aren't running like one of every single hand trap that others are playing or if you are you're gimping your deck a lot for a single copy of cross out that you may or may not draw so i think it does have some drawbacks that make it just objectively worse than called by still has some advantages because it can counter the one card that I think is almost to tier zero other than it, which is Imperm. Uh, called by Can't Negate Imperm, which is the main reason actually that I would put Imperm here is because it, it is like one of the hardest to out hand traps in the game. It has a good amount of impact, like it has impact in pretty much every single matchup. It's not to say that this card alone will win you games usually, but it is like high impact enough that it can win you games if your opponent is not on the best hand ever. And it also has the advantage that it can't get called by. So they need to have their one of copy of cross out in hand to be able to stop this, which makes it really, really good. Well, they don't actually need to have cross out because there's another hand trap actually that you could use to stop Imperm if you really had to. And that would be red reboot. And I think red reboot right now is actually really, really good. I would put it, mm, that's not deck specific. I'd probably put it around here in tier two. Uh, I'll put it under thrust. I don't think it's quite as good as thrust because it doesn't have as much of a spread. But the thing about red reboot 
is that it plays extremely well into Labyrinth, obviously, like it just wins the game against Labyrinth. And Labyrinth is very, very popular and very, very strong right now. So I definitely think having an option that's extremely reliable against Labyrinth is great. Not to mention Tier Limits is super popular right now as well. And that deck also will get kind of clapped by Red Reboot because their traps are some of their best cards. It's not to say that, you know, you activate Red Reboot and you insta win against Tier Limit. It just makes it a lot easier to crack down on their board after you negate their Solik, let's say, with this card. And then you can you can like not have to deal with the pressure of Solik. Definitely not up here. It doesn't have enough of a spread of matchups, but I definitely feel like it's kind Kind of a tier two card right now not really a bad pick this might be a bit of a stretch i could understand if you guys think i'm overrating this card a little bit it's just like so game winning in certain matchups and it's so crazy and being able to stop imperm sometimes can be game winning on its own you know so an extra out to imperm is not necessarily bad to have almost everyone is running this card next up here let's do valor i think valor is just the worst version of imperm uh, I'll explain my reasoning, but I will still put it in tier 2. I think it's an incredible card for sure with a lot of spread of different matchups, and it does have some advantages over Imperm. My thing about Valor is Imperm at least can be used on your own turn, so it can be used as a board-breaking option. For example, you know, if you have uh, if you have Evenly in hand, you could use Imperm to stop Baron or like force out a Baron de Fleur. Then you can go into battle phase and activate evenly, whereas you could not do that with an effect Veiler. On the other hand, though, effect Veiler does have some synergy with Snake Eyes in the sense that, you know, you can normal summon the Veiler if you have no other Snake Eyes in hand. And then you can activate Where Art Thou and search Poplar. So it has some applicability there. Also, it's a tuner. Also, it's a target for Selene. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons that you might want to run Veiler over Imperm depending on the deck. So I definitely could see it. And it's still like a super good card, again, with a good spread of matchups. And another really good thing about it is that it's not once per turn and that you can use it while you have cards on your field, right? So, for example, you know, if you're playing a combo deck and you're going first and you set up your board, and you have Valor in hand, you can actually activate it. Now, to be fair, you could just set Imperm, so it doesn't change much. But there are some decks like Rescue Ace that literally summon on turn zero. And for those decks, I mean, Valor is great because if you're summoning on turn zero, putting monsters on the field, you know, you want to have hand traps in your deck that actually allow you to activate them. So drawing into Valor off of Max C when you have monsters on the board is really, really strong. So it has some advantages. I just think, generally speaking, being just a pretty bad going second card versus Imperm, which is just better suited, I think, to a best of one format, makes it the better hand trap. All right, let's throw two more of those deck specific ones that I want to talk about. So I'm going to put Kurikara and Droll up here in tier three deck specific. Uh, these cards are so, so, so broken in Snake Eyes. The fact that they can just search Droll off of Where Art Thou, like mid combo when they get max seed. So, you know, they can do all the searching they need to do. Your opponent gets to draw like maybe two cards and then you go Where Art Thou, search Droll, summon once more. Your opponent draws a card, you activate Droll. You Droll yourself, but you already finished all your searching. And now you can build this crazy board of advantage and your opponent barely got to draw anything off of max C. Makes Droll so crazy in that deck, but outside of Snake Snake Eyes, I would say Droll is not amazing. Honestly, Droll is just kind of okay right now because it doesn't do much to Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes can go wanted in the draw phase to play around Droll. And, you know, they'll end up doing pretty much all the searching they need to do before you can even Droll. So it's not really that impactful against them. It kind of behaves as a worse Ash Blossom against Snake Eyes. And even Ash is not that high impact against that deck in particular. And is by far the most popular deck. Then other decks like Tier Limits can just send a bunch of stuff to the graveyard. So they don't really care that if they get Drolled either. Um, Droll barely does anything to Branded because most of the time this, the card that Branded will search is their Branded Fusion. And sure, you can Droll them after that, but it's already too late at that point. So just generally speaking, I think it's not a very good card right now. Not to say it's bad per se. If it's not specifically in Snake Eyes, it's just all right. Then we have Kurikara Divine Carnet, which actually is a fire level one. So not only can you search it with Where Art Thou, but you can also search it with just your Snake Eyes Ash. So if you're playing into a board like Cash Chira or something, or you get your opponent to activate a bunch of effects, you can just search this card and literally tribute the whole field and just swing for game instantly. There's a lot of scenarios where this card will just insta win you games in Snake Eyes. It's really, really terrifying. And there's other scenarios too where it won't insta win the game, but it'll make it a lot easier to play. Like for example, you know, if you play through a Baron and a couple of other interruptions and then you go for Kurikara and you just get to remove a bunch of monsters from the field or get rid of an Appaloosa that still has 
had like three activations left or something like that. It's just a really, really scary card in Snake Eyes in particular. Whereas for other decks where it's not searchable, I would prefer a Kaiju personally. Although at the end of the day, if it's unsearchable, it's really up to you. It's not, it's not really a bad card, even if you're just drawing it. I just think it fits better into deck specific because I see it more as a Snake Eyes card at this point. All right, next up here, let's do one that I think is really, really slept on. And that would be Ghost Bell. I think, oh, by the way, I, I want to change this order a little bit. So I think Ghost Bell goes over Red Reboot. I also think Valor goes over Red Reboot. Um, actually, I think Valor even goes over Ghost Bell. But uh, Ghost Bell, I think, is kind of slept on as well. Um, not as slept on as Evenly Match right now. But um, just Ghost Bell being able to negate Flamberge is pretty huge. Not to mention, there's so many decks doing stuff out of the graveyard that it's really, really good to be able to just go Ghost Bell to negate it. Even into Branded, Ghost Bell is pretty good because, you know, if like they have a response to your Ash on Branded Fusion and then you can actually like Ghost Bell their Albion or something like that, like that's really, really good as well. So Ghost Bell is just a really great card into this format. Not to mention, obviously, it's insane against Tier Limit. There's just so many matchups where this card is applicable right now. So I think you shouldn't sleep on this card. It's a really, really good card. All right, next up here, I would put DD Crow. I think DD Crow is not nearly as good as Ghost Bell into this format. Sure, sometimes if you're lucky, your DD Crow can like banish one of the two level one monsters in the grave and Flaberge will fizzle. But for that to happen, they need to only have two level one fires in the grave when they trigger the graveyard effect of Flamberge. There are other applications for DD DD Crow that make it pretty tempting. For example, you can use DD Crow to not have to deal with uh, the Promethean Princess. You can remove her from the grave and just not have to think about it. It's definitely not a terrible card. It's just all right. And on the subject of all right cards, this one, uh, I might look stupid for this, but I don't know, guys. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments for this one. I, I'm Nibiru. I think Nibiru is not amazing right now. I think it's like it's like, it's good. It's good, but it's only good in certain scenarios because you rarely ever want to Nibiru the snake eyes board because they'll just play around nibiru by using their field spell to put a flamberge in the back row which means if you nibiru they're they're just going to get to summon the flamberge and keep comboing off so like to be able to play around that it's kind of tough you kind of have to like have another hand trap if you have like imperm or ash or valor plus nibiru in hand suddenly going nibiru into snake eyes is actually quite good because by the time they've set up everything and already used the graveyard effect of flamberge then you can go nibiru and get a lot more advantage off of it there was also a part of me that considered maybe i put it in deck specific because if you activate nibiru playing labyrinth then you can actually chain your furniture discard your nibiru in labyrinth and because the Nibiru doesn't get summoned to the field, your opponent doesn't even get a token. So they just get everything wiped and don't get a big token for you to out. But uh, I'm just going to put it in It's Alright. Main reason for that is, like I said, doesn't play very well into Snake Eyes, especially on its own. It doesn't play well at all into Despia. It barely does anything. Doesn't play well at all into Tier Limit, which like those are some of the most popular decks I'm seeing. Then some people might go, what about Cash Tier Up? Kashiro almost never summons over five times. I barely ever see Kashiro play into Nibiru. Usually they'll summon four times in pass. So like so many times when I'm facing Kashiro and I see Nibiru, I'm like, oh, please, please summon one more. Please summon one more. And they don't do it. And then I lose. So I'm not going to do it. I don't think it's that great. I'm just going to put it in. It's all right. Let me know if I'm crazy in the comments. It really is how I feel though. Uh, next up, let's do a broken one. Let's do like one of the best deck specific ones that you can have really and that would be super polymerization pretty much any deck that plays fusion monsters should be playing super poly just a quick tip here if you're playing super poly absolutely play mud dragon uh it's very very likely that you're able to summon mud dragon into snake eyes and garura is pretty hard to summon against snake eyes so i highly recommend playing the muddy mud dragon as a target for your super poly in this current format it's just one of the best super poly targets right now to be playing we'll just put golem and kaijus together i think golem and kaijus also goes in deck specific also uh Maybe I should change this order. I think there's no way that anything other than maybe Shifter is debatably better than Super Poly. Just the fact that it's unresponsible. I'm going to put it up here. Um, Kaijus are still good. You know, Kaijus can help. They're not the best thing ever right now because a Kaiju alone is not going to like save you against a full Snake Eyes board. But it can help if the rest of your hand is able to play through a lot of their stuff to just get rid of like their IP Mascarena sometimes or getting rid of their Baron if they did set it up. So yeah, Kaijus are good. Um, I'm going to put Kaijus, uh, Sphere Mode, and Lava Golem all in the same tier. To me, they're deck specific because a lot of the time, if you're playing Lava Golem, it's because you're playing a deck that doesn't really care about its normal summon like Makanko. Or if you're playing a regular Kaiju, that means that usually your deck can search 
shit. Like, for example, I know Math Mech usually runs that Lightning Kaiju that they can search, uh, whereas like Tier Limits will run the Gamma Seal, not because they can search it, but because they can use it as a fusion material and recycle it. So it's a pretty good target for that deck. So I'm going to put it in deck specific. Definitely not a bad option. There's many, many scenarios where you're going to be happy to see these, especially like the format is really, really focused on Snake Eyes, but it's definitely not the only deck that's playable right now. There are still decks like Super Heavy Samurai going out there and uh, not a lot of drools. So Super Heavy is kind of doing whatever it wants right now. So, you know, having some Kaijus on deck or better yet, you know, a, super, a Lava Golem or something will really help you to crack those kinds of heavy negate boards that Manadium and Super Heavy Samurai loves to put up. Uh, you know, while we're at it, I did mention this earlier, but I'll just put the talents next to the thrust to make it clear that I think these are like pretty much interchangeable. In fact, you know, hmm, this one is better going first. I'm, I'm actually going to put talents above. I, I wasn't sure about it, but the more I think about it, I think talents, generally speaking, if you're going to play either of these at three, I think it should be talents. Um, sure, this card has more flexibility going second, but this card going first is just straight up way better. Every time that I see talents when my opponent is going first and they, you know, I try to use a hand trap to stop their combo and then they get to go talents and look at my hand and discard a card from my hand. I get so upset. So yeah, I think talents is actually better. All right. And for this one here, this is also deck specific. I think this is like a really insane card and it's basically just the Dark Ruler No More of certain decks. I guess I can put like Dark Ruler No More and Forbidden Droplet together here because I think they're pretty deck specific. <laughs> Dark Ruler No More is just a crazy thrust target whereas you can't search the droplet with thrust. So I like that you can just run like one Dark Ruler No More and a bunch of other spells that you might want to search in like two, three copies of thrust. Like that's really, really cool. But the thing about Droplet is if your deck doesn't really care about discarding or in fact gets advantage from putting certain cards in the graveyard, it can be very, very beneficial for you to have this card that people can't respond to that just gets a bunch of your graveyard set up while also negating a bunch of monsters on the field. It's very, very deck dependent for these two cards. So I'm going to put them in deck specific staples. They're both super, super good cards, but I would say like this card is better in Manadium, whereas like Dark Ruler No More is probably better in a deck that doesn't have as much discarding to do. Uh, for example, I think Dino you know if you were, like dinos obviously is a very rogue deck but it's just a random example of a deck where if you had to pick between either i would pretty much always go for dark ruler no more because sure going for game is really cool but dinos is two card combos they're very limited you really don't want to have to discard a bunch of must plays in your hand so it's very deck dependent i would say but definitely both are insane options in the current format if you can afford to run them all right and let's finish it off here there's only one card left to put on this list for me and that would be gamma and this one is really an enigma to me obviously Obviously it doesn't go up here but I'm really not sure like like part of me wants to put it in deck specific like you could say it's mostly synchro decks that run it but then again like I've seen labyrinth run gamma because oftentimes they'll just have trap cards and you know it's an extra way to negate ash blossom which is really great so like gamma is good in trap decks too and when it pops off it's an amazing card but also sometimes it'll break your hand oftentimes once you start doing your combo it's suddenly dead in hand so like I kind of want to put it here, but I kind of want to put it here. I'm going to put it here just because when it does resolve, it's basically the best hand trap ever. <laughs> like, especially if you're going first and you get to negate like a hand trap with gamma and then you get a free synchro out of it. Suddenly this card can become a hand rip. So not only does it negate a card, but then it hand rips your opponent. So it goes plus one. It's a, uh, it's a really crazy card when it pops off, but it's very, very hard to rate it for me just because like I said, driver breaking your hand is awful. The fact that it's a dead card in hand, once you have monsters on the field makes it so if your opponent is playing around it, which most people are, you'll pretty much never be able to negate maxi with this card. Uh, there are still scenarios where you'll be able to activate it. Like a lot of the time people will have to ash certain cards, especially like, let's say you're playing branded and you want branded fusion, but I don't think you're going to play, you know, gamma and branded. So, you know, it's hard to say. I'm gonna put it here. This one is a big question mark to me. Like I genuinely don't know where to put it. But yeah, that's about it for my staples tier list. I hope I went in depth enough and not too much. I know I did a lot of yapping in this video, but I just wanted to explain my reasoning. I feel like for these like specific cards, there's just so many ways to talk about them, especially when you talk about the deck specific ones, because yeah, they are deck specific, but also you can play them as just regular staples in many decks and still do really good with them. At the end of the day, every single card in this list is very good. And that's kind of what I was going for here. It's more so like talking about these options and, you know, discussing what's good about them. Where are they at their best? Where are they at their worst? Uh, you know, even these cards here like Didi Crow and Nibiru, like they have a lot of things going for them. Anyway, 
Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. And yeah, I hope to see you in the subathon or if that subathon is already passed, I hope to see you on stream in the comments. Dude. Video over.